Hi, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here, Avon High School, looking at example seven from topic 6.3. We're still talking about improper integrals. We only have a few more examples to go, and we're now dealing with these endpoint discontinuities. So, yep, another infinite discontinuity at an endpoint. So, if we look at the problem itself or the preceding information, we see that there are three different instances where you have an improper integral with an in infinite, sorry, discontinuity. I know the contents of this box seems really confusing, very intimidating, but if I scroll down to the problem that we're going to do, we already did example six in a previous video, but in this problem seven we see that our function is one over x cubed and our lower boundary is zero, upper limit boundary is two, and once again like example six it is the zero in that lower boundary that causes for this discontinuity. And by saying it's an infinite discontinuity, we're just talking about a vertical asymptote there right at x equals zero, right on the on the y-axis. So problem seven is also going to be set up using criteria two, where we take the limit of some variable that approaches that zero from the right. Now I will probably use a for my letter c, and then I'll put the zero in here for a like I did before. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution. So we are going to make sure that we earn our first point by writing our limit statement. And again, I can't emphasize enough, there's only one way to approach the zero. We only live between zero and two. So that means if we have to approach our left endpoint of zero, we can only do so from that right side. So then we integrate from a up to 2 here, dx over x cubed. And if you have to think of the dx over x cubed as being 1 over x cubed with respect to x, and then 1 over x cubed is x to the negative 3, that's perfectly OK. And so when we integrate that, it'll be a little bit easier. So we are going to write down our limit statement. The antiderivative of x to the negative 3 is x to the negative 2 over negative 2, which one way to write that would be negative 1 half times 1 over x squared. That would essentially be negative 1 over x to the negative 2. All right, now we're going to use our boundaries from 2 to a, and our limit is still being quite patient here. And so let's see what we have. If we plug a 2 in, I think it's pretty clear. I think you're going to get negative 1 over 8, I believe, because you're going to have a 2 times a 2 squared, 2 times 4. There is a built-in minus with the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if I let this x now become a, I would essentially have negative 1 over 2a squared. Be looking something like that. Now, the limit comes into play. Well, the limit is not going to affect this first value, so essentially we're just going to stay as negative 1 eighth. I suppose you can combine those two negatives. And now we have to think about what's happening down here. We are going to let this a approach 0 from the positive side, although it really doesn't matter in this case since a is going to be squared. So as this a gets super small, squares itself, which probably is going to make it get even smaller because it is a number probably very close to zero. When you square those things, they get smaller. Multiply by two, okay, well that's going to double a very small number. And we're still going to get something that's very, very small right here. Now this isn't very mathematical, but I want you to point, uh, I want to uh, point out that one over a very small value, a very small positive value, is going to be infinity. And so it really doesn't make much difference if we're going to add a negative 1 8 to infinity, we're still going to get this infinite value. And if you have an infinite value, you can say that your improper integral diverges. In other words, the area is just too large to possibly count. Once again, I've gone ahead and sketched the graph here for you. So let's see if we can pull that up any luck, and we see our 1 over x cubed. Now, as you can see, if I find this area 
from zero to two, I'm talking about accumulating all of this space, right, all the way up here to two. Now the issue is at the very beginning. When we start accumulating this space beginning at x equals zero, it's going to say, okay, well, all of this infinite space that's up here is going to have to be accounted for. And from the graph, you could probably make a connection that, well, it looks like the curve is just not super close to the y-axis. So maybe that is indicative of why we have such a large amount of area infinite layer. And that's a really good observation, but you don't always want to rely on just the visual from, from these graphs because the scales could be all wonky and a lot, of, a lot of things could be influencing your interpretation. But nothing will be knowing how to properly set up the improper integral the right way and coming up with the answer that um, you need. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, looks like we do have a, another couple of videos that will round out our, our discussion of improper integration. So we want to make sure that you stick around for those. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.